Hello everyone and welcome to the next installment of the EVCraft Business Let's Play tutorial series. Uh, I'm Jalapeno and uh, you'll notice that our base from our last video has actually changed a little bit. I'll just quickly explain exactly what's been done so far. Uh, first off, I've been collecting a lot of resources and trying to work more on my power generation. And uh, what you see here is a medium voltage solar array. This, uh, this array actually is the equivalent of 64 four solar panels or eight of those low voltage solar arrays that we've been working with. Um, that's being pumped now into an MFE which is the next tier of power, tier three of power storage um, and it holds up to four million EU which you can see is uh, you know it, it's uh, doing quite well for us. Um, these other two boxes you see here the one I am standing on is a medium voltage transformer. That's because uh, the MFEs, um, their electrical output is exceptionally high. That it basically blow up any of these machines if I was to just connect directly to them. So the medium voltage downgrades the power a little bit, um, and then the low voltage uh, downgrades that power even further to a point where it works with my furnace and uh, mass rater and all the other machines. Um, we. Basically, I've also got, uh, I've expanded my ore processing. I've got here uh, an ore washer, which if you'll recall, when we, um, when we crush ores in the macerator, we uh, get these crushed ores, like so crushed copper, crushed iron, crushed tin, etc., etc. You can actually take those ores and put them in the ore washer. And what that does, is uh, it actually uh, creates some additional byproducts. It will create a purified version of the ore you're washing, uh, usually a stone dust, which is only useful for uh, construction foam, which basically is a building block for uh, industrial craft. And then you can occasionally get um, a, a tiny piece of another dust. So like, it all just poofed, but what you would have seen um, what you would have seen if uh, my system hadn't immediately taken her away is this. Uh, you would have seen, it's probably that tiny pile of silver dust. It's one of these two. Um, but basically what the tiny piles are is you can take nine of them and make a new dust out of it. So I take nine tin dust here, for example. And I have a tin dust. So effectively putting the um, when you put stuff in the macerator, you get two crushed items. When you put it into the ore washer, you get uh, your item back in a different form, plus a potential additional item where when you get nine of those, you get another ore. So it actually increases your uh, your ore production very slightly, but it does do it. Then you can go a step further. And over here, I have a thermal centrifuge. Now, this bad boy is one of those things you really have to want to maximize your ore output if you want to use it, because this thing sucks up energy like you wouldn't believe. I've got it hooked up directly to my medium voltage outlet simply because it can accept up to 128 EU a tick in packets, but to um, even convert one uh, purified ore, it will take tens of thousands of EU to do it. I couldn't tell you the exact amount, but it's it's a crazy amount. Um, if I was to actually put a stack of purified stuff in here, my MFE, which is uh, you know 2.5 million EU right now, would pretty much be drained out, um, you know, probably within about 30 minutes uh, of game time. Um, so I would wait on this one until you actually have a, a really solid amount of energy going or having it on its uh, on a self-sufficient uh, power source. The ore washer still consumes a decent amount of energy but is definitely much more uh, uh, energy friendly. It does however come with one additional component as you can see it requires water. Um, obviously it's hard to wash stuff without it. Um, so what I've done and uh, this is just basically a low-tech way of getting water. Um, there is the old-school version of, you know, getting a pump and just pumping it into uh, the thing. If I had a, 
if you know I took this pond and I actually put some water source blocks in here and just had an infinite water supply uh, but what I decided to use instead just because I like to be different is rain tanks uh, rain tanks are a forestry item they're actually pretty easy to make uh, if memory serves correctly it's basically uh, a casing which uh, basically is eight bronze ingots, some glass, and some iron. And what happens is every time it rains or snows or just precipitates in your world, uh, it will fill up with water. And um, it has a pretty sizable internal tank. I've got two of them right now. So for the most part, unless I'm washing a ton of ores, these usually stay uh, you know, relatively full um, with all the times that it rains on the server. Um, that's effectively the changes that I made. I've also um, changed my uh, my ore delivery system a bit. If you remember correctly, I had a I had this wood chest over here next to a quarry that uh, I was pulling items out of. I've now taken my first step in being able to expand my empire which is now I'm using an ender chest. Ender chests are actually fairly expensive to make. They require an ender pearl, some blaze rods, uh, obsidian, um, but once you make one it works just like the ender chests, um, the vanilla ones, where items will get pulled into it and then you can pull it out from another ender chest with the same combination. Uh, combinations uh, I will give you a small example of. Basically, uh, these three blocks on top of the chest, you can color code to however you want. Um, now, for the default is white, white, white. So this chest is actually pretty insecure simply because of the fact whenever anyone on the server makes an ender chest, it starts with these three colors. So if I was to put something in here, uh, there's a good chance someone else with an ender chest at the same level is going to wind up taking it out on me. So uh, one of the things I can do um, to, to help fix that or just to better sort which ender chests are used in my own area is I can put dyes on these. So I got myself some two blue dye. As you can see, I just uh, grabbed a flower that's been spawning here and converted it and just throw it on here. And now it's blue, white, white which means that uh, you know it will only show inventory for that color combination. So if I was to actually put a piece of dirt in here right now and say change it again so it's blue, white, blue, the inventory is clear. Uh, if I had white dye and I put that back, that dirt would still be in there. Um, another thing you can do is uh, with diamonds you can actually lock your chest so it's specifically for you. Um, to lock a chest all you do is take a diamond and you right click on the handle here it will consume the diamond um, but now it's locked to me. Uh, it's hard to make out because of the GUI but here it has my name Jalapeno777 which means if someone else was to make a chest and do the same color combination, they will not be able to still to access the items that's in this inventory. This is only for ender chests that are locked with my username. Um, so what I've done here is this is a white, white, white just because I'm lazy like that, but it's locked under my name. So um, as you can see right now, some stuff is going through it. That's from my quarry that's in a miscraft world. Uh, it's popping uh, items into there and it's just bringing them over here and they're Im immediately getting funneled into my AE system. It's actually pretty, uh, it, it's a pretty sweet setup because what I can do from this point onwards is when I start um, expanding my production, I start creating some farms, I start, uh, uh, you know, if I have a fishing area, if I uh, get my bees starting to generate items for me, I can all flow them into various ender chests with the same white, white, white color combination, and they will all come into this box and all get imported into my network. So I don't have to remember, uh, you know, which pipes go where or, you know, what cabling is set up to work with what area in the network. It just, it just simplifies things uh, immensely. The only downside, of course, is the cost, but a couple blaze rods and ender pearls on the server is really not going to be too hard to come by. Um, I'm going to show you one more thing. I also expanded my, uh, my little auto crafting CPU. I was running out of patterns. 
Um, so now you'll see I actually have uh, a second page that I can put patterns in. I will need to expand this more, but it's pretty expensive to keep building this out. So for the time being, I'm uh, leaving it as is. The one other thing that I've done is I have found a place where I'm going to start building out my base. Um, and I'm just going to show you a, a new kind of nice thing that comes from uh, Twilight is the mining tree. Uh, the mining tree just comes as a sapling. Uh, typically I find them in dungeon chests. And what happens is when the tree grows, it always grows in that pattern. And all these ores that you see here, these are all ores that were actually underneath the surface here. Uh, these trees have just been basically bringing the ores up to the surface and they're consistently continuing to do them. So uh, I've actually got this area all protected, so I'm not worried about people coming here and mining the ore on me. Um, it's not the most efficient way to uh, to obtain ore. However, it is if you happen to have a sapling, it's a really nice and convenient way to get ores. Um, obviously, the ores that come from the tree are not infinite because it only pulls from what's under the ground of it. I'm not sure the exact range, but as you can kind of see with, uh, you know, how it's been playing itself out, it's not incredibly far. Um, but I always thought that, that was just kind of a neat thing. Uh, sometimes I like just to put trees up just to, you know, amaze new players who have never seen anything. Like, oh, look at that, a whole bunch more just came up. I love it. Um, so yeah, that's effectively all to it. So we're going to keep this uh, this particular video short. Um, I am going to start uh, moving into my new base shortly, but in the meantime, I want to start producing a new source of fuel. Um, and that is uh, called coke coal. Now coke coal effectively is just uh, an advanced version of regular coal, uh, but we make it uh, with coke oven bricks. Um, and it requires basically, you know, a handful of clay converted into bricks and then a bunch of sand. Uh, I think the grand totals are about 108 clay and 150 sand, I think, for all the bricks you need to make a single coke oven. Um, we'll basically figure that out now. I also moved my uh, stuff over. I found it a little bit easier when I'm doing my mass creation of stuff to just have my uh, terminals over here rather than having to come over uh, close to the controller here all the time. So now I have most of these materials already created. You require 27 coke oven bricks to make a single coke oven. So let's see how well that does. Hey, look at that, I had enough. All right, so now to make a Coke oven, uh, you basically just place the blocks on the ground and you have to place it in a three by three setup. Now the only catch here is in the very middle of uh, the block, you wanna leave that, uh, you wanna leave that empty. Oh, so I guess you actually need 26 blocks. Yeah, I guess. See, my math is wrong. 9 times 3 minus 1. All right, so you know you've done it right when this little window pops up. Uh, and now I can open it, and uh, now I have this whole new interface. So now what I'm going to do is grab a stack of coal. and just pop it in there. So now what's going to wind up happening is uh, every three minutes or so it's actually going to take one of these coal and convert it into coke coal. And three minutes is a long time and if I need hundreds of these probably a good idea for me would be to build a couple more ovens. Uh, now one of the things I'm also going to do is I'm going to automate the supply and uh, withdrawal of this system uh, to make my life a little bit simpler. So we already have uh, we already have the basic import cables. We're only going to need just the basic one because we're not going to have to remove full stacks of stuff at a time or just particular items. 
but now we're going to get a new thing called the export bus, which is basically a cable that takes items out of the network. Now we only need a basic one because we're only taking out uh, one type of item. And we don't have to have it go out in stacks uh, because it takes so long for the oven to work. Uh, 64 pulses um, to, make, to uh, put coal, a full stack of coal in there will not be a problem. Uh, so... I see a creeper coming after me. Uh, I don't have a sword on me. Uh, okay. We'll do this old school. There we are. Oh, and I also have, uh, this is actually my discard pit. This incredibly unsafe pile of lava. If I was smart, I'd probably put it over to the side and maybe cover it up so I could throw stuff in, but not just walk into it. I've been lucky and haven't done it yet, but, uh, you never know what could happen. Uh, right. And we are saving right now at the moment, so that'll just take a second. There we are. Alright, so now we need glass, because I used it all making that coke oven. But thankfully, I actually have uh, created a lot of sand recently. Sand, of course, is uh, with a macerator, you can actually convert cobblestone into it. So, uh, once we get that done, and I have cable somewhere too, I need. Now, I won't need much cable because um, the uh, AutoCrafter uh, assembly there, because it's part of the network, I'm only going to have to put a couple cables between it and the uh, the Coke oven. Uh, it looks like our export thing is created. Alright, and should be good. Alright, so we put one cable down. I don't have my wrench on me. There we are. Alright, so now it's uh, it's set up, but it's not actually set to do anything yet. So we'll take those out, just to kind of show you how it works. We've also had our first uh, cold coal created. Uh, when cold coal is created, it also produces 500, uh, uh, well, half a bucket, I guess, of uh, creosote oil. Um, this, I've mentioned before, is primarily used for um, creating uh, uh, train tracks in the game. Uh, it does have a few other uses. It is capable of being sold um, to the server as well um, and I think there are a few other uses too just in a decorative setting I'm not quite sure what they all are um, but it's just this is a byproduct of getting the the cold coke but you will need to figure out something to do with this because once it maxes out it won't produce any more cold coke so you have to find a, an outlet for it so what we're gonna do here is the export bus we're just going to put in a piece of coal to tell it we want to export coal into it and now it's filling it up with coal and so now what's going to happen is every time uh, up the procedure completes uh, this stack will go down and the exporter will throw another one in there so I've got just over 2,000 coal if I left this running you know for the next week and a half um, you know in real life basically eventually it would convert it all into coal coke um, the other thing we need to do is actually remove the coal coke that's been created because obviously once it gets to a stack it, it will stop there as well so we I thought I made an importer maybe just didn't grab it there it is Alright, and so now whenever uh, cold coke is created, it will take it out. It doesn't do anything with the uh, creosote oil. That is something that we're going to uh, start handling in the next episode when we start dealing with uh, fluid management. Uh, but now it will d consistently do this conversion up until the point uh, this uh, oil inventory maxes out. 
And now the reason why um, I'm wanting to make whole coke is because the next component I'm going to want to make is a blast furnace. Uh, blast furnaces take a lot more. I actually don't have the ingredients to do this in this video. Um, I have to uh, run out to the nether and uh, farm a bunch more stuff in order to get it. But effectively, um, what a blaze furnace is, is it's the way you make steel on the server. And steel then comes in pretty handy for uh, fluid storage and a number of uh, advanced machines when it comes to railcraft stuff. So, um, I typically use the, um, because the blast furnace requires a solid fuel, I typically convert to coal coke because, I'll show you, uh, um, when you look at coal, you see how it says it produces uh, 4K EU uh, a tick. The, the coal coke, produces 16 so it actually quadruples its uh, its fuel uh, potency uh, for nothing more than just time just having it sit in here and uh, create the the, uh, the coal coke all right well that's uh, all there is for this particular episode in the next one we're going to start working on uh, fluid storage and uh, we'll get our blast furnace set up take it easy